Hello, my lovely cryptids, and welcome to another episode of Stories with Siren. I'm your host, Siren, and today we actually have another story from Epistolary. Honestly, they've been wonderful to let me use their stories for my podcast, and in return, I can only hope that I've done their work justice. I personally find it quite smoldering. And it's always a treat to see another one of their stories come across my dashboard. Well, why don't we get into the story? And you can see for yourself how intoxicating their work can be. You really didn't think this through, did you? You thought you could experiment with gaining, see how it went, and give up if you didn't like the result. He went from being trim and slender to a little thick pretty quickly, having a noticeable butt, a belly for the first time, and a chub to give you curves all over. You liked that. You wanted more. So you started eating like a gainer, and it worked. You got the large fry and the large soda with your lunch. You made a point to always get dessert after dinner sometimes after lunch. You never missed that midnight snack, that afternoon snack, that late morning snack, and you grew. You noticed it in your waistline first, the pants, the underwear that kept getting too tight, even as you kept moving up sizes. Then it was your shirts, which seemed to be shrinking and getting tighter as your belly grew and hung lower your chest and arms thickened, your love handles flowing out in larger and larger rolls. Eventually it hit your thighs, arms, double chin, and you weren't just thick anymore. You weren't even chubby. You were fat all over. And other people took notice too. Your friends, especially those who love to go to the gym and perpetually tweaking their diets, teasing you for letting yourself go so badly. Your family started dropping hints, eventually not so subtle ones, about your condition, where you saw yourself as someone who wasn't anywhere close to the size of the super chubs you admired. They saw a formerly skinny person who was apparently ballooning out of control. They scrutinized you every time you ate a meal, every hour you spent playing video games, every time you put on a piece of clothing that was ever so slightly tight. As if you weren't self-conscious enough already. At the start, gaining was fun, and you didn't think of it as much more than playing dress-up with your body. But eventually, the extra weight and the diet it took to gain it started to change that. The large fry went from an indulgence to an expectation, and you craved your snacks and desserts when you couldn't have them. Your car started feeling uncomfortable and cramped. You had to move your flab out of the way to do things like wash your body or reach into your pockets. A short walk, a small stare, a long time standing left you winded and overheated. True, you'd never been the athletic type, but attracting attention to yourself like this, being the object of side-eye and smirks over how out of shape you were, was a new, uncomfortable experience. So you resolved to quit gaining and get your old body back. And that's when you realized it. You couldn't just do things the way you used to then and go back to the way you were. It doesn't work like that. Putting on a couple hundred pounds changes who you are. You'd have to fight to get your old body back, using a body you specifically made to be as ill-adapted to that as possible. A body that exceeds its capacity by just trying to move itself. A body that demands calories, fats, and sugars constantly. A body that has such limited endurance It's practically designed for gaining by default. 
This is not a body you could take to the gym seven days a week. You're not giving just salad and vegetables to a subconscious screaming for pizzas and burgers. No way you're starting an active lifestyle in a body that can barely lumber to the car. You may as well face facts. You'll be lucky if you can work your way up to a walk around the block every day and drop 10 or 20 pounds to get the condescending congratulations of those around you. But thin is never going to be a word people use to describe you again. You should be thankful if you stay where you are, frankly. You live in a body now that wants you to get fatter anyway. It's not like your metabolism is going to get any faster as time goes on. There's every likelihood that even if you're not gaining, your weight is going to creep up on you bit by bit. A few pounds every few months. In a few years, you might look up and realize that while you thought you were holding steady, you'd packed on a stealthy few dozen more. I wonder what that's going to do to you. It's not like you're starting into trim 150. You're adding weight to an already morbidly obese body. You're groping blindly toward a tipping point. At what point does the creeping extra weight disrupt your equilibrium? Make you that much less active, that much more tired, that much more hungrier, and send you back into the habit of accelerating gains? Or worse, what happens when that ankle twists or that knee gives out and you're stuck on the couch for a couple weeks? You might just come out of your recovery with even less endurance and an unstoppable appetite, primed to start obscenely gorging yourself on, well, who knows how much. I think by now you realize just how much trouble you're in. You're already fatter than most people can even imagine a person being, and you're in no position to reverse course. One slip, and you're on the road to a TV freak show fat. And all because you thought you could eat a few burgers and get chubby and not face any consequences. I hope it was worth it. That was No Going Back by Epigstillary. Hmm, isn't it quite interesting to think, where is that tipping point of no going back, that point of no return, that point where you can't go back to what was, and instead you're on the path to what is and what will be. My, my, isn't that quite the thought. But I suppose it serves me quite well. After all, I've always been a fan of those people with extra roles. Well, my cryptids, it's been a lovely time, but it's time for me to go. So, until next time, ta-ta.